All right, so let's start this pattern. I got my Gamagatsu hook here. I'm gonna take some wire benders and I'm gonna go ahead and start bending the hook. So what I'm looking to do is to have a progressive bend. I'll start with the eye and I'm gonna slowly work my way back on the shank here and bend it. And then what, I want, what I'm looking for is where the eye of the hook is slightly below the hook point still. Once you do that, all you gotta do, stick it in your vise. Start with some thread, do a decent uh, thread base here, because we still have to put the um, material on we want it to stick to. Since we're gonna be using epoxy, uh, it helps to have a little extra thread where the tail is gonna be and the spoon skin and the lead and everything. So it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be a thread base. What I like to do is go back and forth like this versus touching wraps or anything crazy. This makes a rougher uh, area for the epoxy to adhere to. This is a Gamagatsu 2 aught versus the 1 aught because I want to have a little extra space at the end of the shank for the tail and everything. I want to make sure there's room. I'm using white thread. I've used mono thread for this as well. I figured I'd go with white this time since most of the fly will be white. Alright, so once I get that there, I'm going to come in with my .035 gauge lead and I'm going to wrap it about start at the three quarter point here. I'm going to add about a third of the shank and make it lead. Okay, I'm going to go back over that. More thread, help kind of lock that in place. And this is a very simple fly to tie. You don't need that much uh, stuff. You do need a drying wheel if you want to use the slow cure epoxy, which is what I would recommend based on some experience here, um, just to make sure that it lasts longer. And honestly, it'll probably last longer than most other flies. All right, so now I've got a pretty decent amount of thread over all that, so that's gonna make it really strong. Uh, what I'm gonna use for the tail is a white slow roller tail. It's gonna be the medium size, which is uh, labeled as the size one through four. That's the recommended size based on the hook. Um, I'm going to tie in, if you see here, you have the tie-in point. I'm actually going to tie it in right at that first bend. And that's going to make it a little bit shorter. Get that there. You can just tie in the rest of this here or cut it off. Up to you. And the next step is to add two pieces of zonker strip. I'm going to use white magnum. Um, I'm going to use the magnum because I can sandwich it on both sides. I'm going to cut these to length uh, about three quarters of an inch each strip. Three quarters to an inch. And then let's look at the hair length. The hair length kind of determines your overall length too. So I'm going to line it up. What I want to make sure is that the curl is beyond the material. If it starts um, before it, you get more action. After it, obviously, it's going to you know interfere with the action. So since this hair is a little bit longer, I can go ahead and bring this forward and just tie it in, or cut it off and remeasure. So now, I'm, instead of three quarter, I'm going to go to half. It really depends on the zonker strip, to be honest with you. So I've got half inch of leather here to tie in. I'm just going to tie in the tip because I'm going to super glue that tail between these two pieces of zonker. And that's going to help keep it out away from the hook and lower the chances of fouling. This makes an excellent 
tadpole pattern as well. You can um, just change up the color. You can use a black tail with um, olive powder mixed in with your epoxy. Come in with some super glue here. I'm just going to put super glue on both sides just a little bit of each piece of leather. I'm going to hold the tail out where I want it and if you go up a little bit that actually holds it down as in if the hook is riding with hook point up holds the tail down and then just kind of move those fibers back. Now this is not only good for um, hook fouling but um, when you put it in the drying wheel it helps assist keeping the tail from hitting the epoxy. You can use a piece of painter's tape and just pinch it on the end there too before you stick it on the wheel so you don't have any troubles with that. Alright, so the next step is I'm going to add my spoon skins. I'm going to use the largest one, the one aught here. Uh, it fits perfectly if you're just doing a plain spoon for the one aught Gamakatsu SS15 hook. Uh, but since this is too hot, no big deal. It'll still create a wobble action side to side. So take the one aught here. All you got to do, you can take an X-Acto knife and the tip of your scissors and you just peel it up off of there. And this skin has a adhesive side, so all I got to do is I'm going to tie this in where the wide part uh, facing forward and you want to measure it. You want to make sure that the, um, the other tie-in point on the skin is up front here. So you can lay it down like so and then tie in the back lift it up and then push it forward Okay, and you can make some last minute adjustments before you lock it down another thing I like to do sometimes is I can add a barbell eye and that can change the action to where this is more diving or you can leave it the way it is and it'll kind of flutter level so it's up to you and what you're looking for. So what I could go ahead and do, I'll just demonstrate that part right now. Alright, so I have medium stainless steel bead chain here. And I'm going to tie this into the top of the shank here, which will also be the essentially the bottom of the fly. Do just a crisscross underneath here. I've got a little gap here, so that's perfect. I'm going to tie in my whip finish. Alright. So now you can see with the light kind of shining off the spoon skin there, you have a platform for the surface tension and the epoxy to stick to. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix up some two-part epoxy. I use the Bob Smith Industries. Uh, I think they have a 20-minute cure, but this is the slow cure. 30 minute. You want to use a slow cure epoxy because what will happen is if you use fast cure it will heat up and it will kind of warp uh, the skin and it won't be good. The benefit of using a thinner skin is you can make a thinner spoon lighter weight. Okay, So that's why I've designed it this way. Alright so what I did was I took my 30 minute epoxy I made two nickel roughly size um, parts, both parts, the, the resin and the, and the curing agent and then I put just a little dash of the pearl loon stuff um, and then what I have here is a pearlescent semi-clear semi-pearl color of epoxy mixed up ready to go so uh, what you can do is you can make a bunch of these and then mix up a bigger batch and then make several at a time so it's easy to make a ton of these at one time uh, the cool part is you get a lot of skins you get 16 skins per pack so um, you can make several with tails without tails whatever and uh, these are great not only for bass uh, but saltwater species as well so they're durable they've been proven on redfish and all types of other fish so I have my resin I'm going to go ahead and apply it on this side first I want it to kind of soak in to the um, the lead the thread I'm going to go ahead and put some on the threads up by that barbell or that chain eye. If you see any bubbles just kind of move them around. And you don't need that much. You don't want to 
overdo it here. There's a slot on the back side of the skin, which I didn't mention earlier, uh, that helps bond both sides of this skin to um, the shank of the hook. And what that does obviously makes it a lot stronger. So when you get to the point where you're doing the back side here and you got more epoxy on it, you kind of have to continually rotate it uh, so you don't get any drippage on your uh, your base or wherever you're tying. And a good rule of thumb is honestly if you get to the point where it is um, dripping, you might have you might got you might have too much epoxy. So you can just kind of move it around, get it, make sure you've covered everything. I like to put a little bit up on these eyes a little bit just keeps it nice and strong just a solid unit and then all you got to do after this is carefully place it in your drying wheel I'm going to put some on these back threads here and let it sit obviously the cure time is 30 minutes but uh, it can be tacky sometimes based on the temperature in your house for a little while maybe up to an hour but the cool part is you can make a ton of these at once super cheap to do super effective fly it's a it's a fun fly to watch move which you also want to do I'll talk about how to use this while I'm slowly spinning it before I put it in the dryer is uh, you want to do quick three inch roughly strips uh, when you're retrieving this fly and that'll make it um, wobble back and forth um, pretty consistently. Uh, that's the slow um, twitch is actually my most favorite way to fish this fly. You can do a long, slow pull as well. But the problem with that is sometimes if you get a strike, then if you're at the end of your pull with a pause, which is usually when the fish strike anyway, sometimes you run out of um, space to do your strip set essentially. So quick little pops, keep your rod tip low, and then wait for that grab and strip set the heck out of it. So this thing, you can fish with floating line and shallow water. Uh, when you get into about eight feet of water, six feet of water, I like to use an intermediate line, clear line, especially for brack, uh, not brackish water, well, that would work as well, but um, for tannic water in the swamps, it's great. This, uh, this is a great bowfin fly, especially early spring, colder temperatures when these fish are kind of chilling at the bottom. Uh, bass, if you throw these, uh, you know, next to logs or whatever, and you just kind of like swim it parallel to downed logs, uh, they'll come out of nowhere just to smash this thing. So there's a lot of movement, um, and it's just a great all-around pattern. Doesn't really look like anything in the wild, but I, I think it's the the action that it has that really makes it that effective. So hope you enjoy. Here's another segment, uh, essentially, for fly skins. Uh, showing you guys how to make some, so to speak, tactical flies when you're fishing for species that uh, that are hard to catch. So, hope you enjoyed. Thank you.